work? Well, it's, that's kind of a bad validation attribute because uh, do, that's the question, right? So, great, I have this uh, attribute, but this attribute only works when I post it back to the server. How do I get this attribute uh, to work on the client? Uh, so, it would be great if we could somehow automatically take the, I, uh, the, the code on the server and pop it up to the client. We don't quite have that, but what we do have is an infrastructure for you to provide the client validation and, and, and map it to the server validation. And I'll show a, a, demo, a quick demo of that. So the next step is I'm going to add this question validator class. And I believe that goes in here. Let's take a quick look at this. We, we at MVC2 introduces this whole system for uh, having metadata and validation metadata about your model that's not specific to any framework. So you could have validation, for example, that comes from a castle validation or your custom validation. But when you do use ours, uh, the data annotations validation, uh, you get some of the benefits that we have this ability uh, to easily hook up a validator attribute that you wrote with client code. So what this class here uh, is, is a bridge between client-side code and server-side code. So when we enable client validation, we emit a bunch of metadata about your model into the view. Uh, let me show you that. Oops. So we'll turn on client validation again. Oops. And uh, yeah, let's just hit this. Oops. Forgot the semicolon. Do do do. All right. So I'm using Notepad 2, and for some reason it doesn't remember your last font settings. All right. So down here we have this block of, uh, this block of JSON, and it's a little hard to read, but the main point uh, that I want to make here is that within that block is information about validation rules for each field of your model. And uh, the reason that's important is that that allows you to reference a, a validation script. So we include, by default, the Microsoft MVC validation script. And what that script does is when it uh, responds to the document load event and it looks for this uh, well-known block of JSON and it uh, hooks up all the client validation. So that means that if you have a custom JavaScript validation library or if you want to use jQuery validation library, you can write an adapter uh, for your own validation library and hook it up to our metadata. Uh, we include in, we have a project that we call MVC Futures. That library includes an adapter for jQuery validation. Uh, so if you want to use jQuery validation with, with our uh, metadata and our validation, you can do that. All right. <clears throat> so back to the question validator. What this does is this looks at, this examines the attribute, the question attribute, and, it, and uh, you tell us what properties of that attribute, what information about that validation you want sent to the client so the client can hook it up. The other thing you also tell us is uh, this key, this validation type. And that way, when we write our client validation method, we, if we match up uh, the validation type on the client side to the server side, MVC will automatically hook that up. So the, the next step here is I need to register this so that MVC knows about it. So in global.asax.cs, I'll just uncomment this line here. And uh, don't worry if I move too fast. I have a blog post I can point to you to that, that describes this in detail and has sample working code. Uh, the main thing I'm doing here is I'm just mapping this question attribute to this validator. So I'm, I'm describing to MVC, this question validator is the bridge from question validator uh, question attribute to the, the client side code. And the next step would be to write the client side code. Now, something we'll look for, look, you know, be interesting to see in the future is if we can use something like Script Sharp or some other means to actually automatically get this uh, JavaScript code written. But, but for the, oh, uh, wrong one. 
question validation. So what I have here is a, sim a fairly straightforward JavaScript function. The key thing here is remember that key, that validation type I mentioned? We reference that right here uh, in this validator's dictionary uh, so that th we can associate this client-side function with that, uh, with that validation rule. So uh, this f function here uh, actually returns a function. So um, you know, if you're not used to functional programming, JavaScript is actually a functional programming language. So you can have functions that return functions, and it gets very confusing if you're not used to that style of programming. Uh, however, the reason why we return this function is we have this bit of uh, initialization code here. And so this outer function gets called one time when we register. This inner function here gets called every time we validate that field. So you can do a little bit of validation code. So you notice here that I'm, I'm getting this uh, value. Does it, end, does it need to end with a question mark? And that's being passed from the server to the client. And then I'm able to use that in my validation logic. So now that I have this all set up, Uh, let's refresh this. And if all goes well, we should now see my custom validation working on the client. So let's clear that. Oh, uh, yep, OK. Uh, testing. Oops. OK, it didn't work. Let's see. OK. Did I compile? OK. And did I edit the right edit view? That's actually the question. So I generated two of those. I have this feeling that I'm looking at the wrong one. It should enable client validation. And OK, so test. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, did I reference the validation script? Rookie mistake, yeah. Yep. So the issue here is that uh, I haven't even referenced this validation script yet. So let's just drag it in here. At least I sure hope that's the issue, because that's a pretty easy solution. OK. So we got the enter title, testing. No? OK. OK, so someone's saying that they, my registration is pointing to the wrong attribute. I thought I got rid of, oh, yeah, yeah. So did I, I never deleted that, the old one. OK, sorry about that. Oh, man. So now I should be pointing to the right one, if, if that's correct. And let's try it one last time. If it doesn't work, I'll move on and, uh, just talk it up as uh, demo gods one fill zero. Okay. Oh, please enter title, test, and then the the real test is who is this? All right, so now it's working. <laughs> so as in most of my demos, thank you for helping me out. I'm, I'm a big fan of pair programming, so uh, or audience programming. Uh, uh, great. Okay, let's see. Did I show everything I want to show? Yes. <laughs>